Rupert Everett, it's lovely to meet you today. Lovely to meet you too. Uh, thanks for chatting us and congratulations on The Happy Prince. Thank you. Because um, this is your directorial debut. It certainly uh, is. And film writing debut as well. It is. Is there an added sense of excitement or nervousness around this one as opposed to like, I'm just a cast member in this one. This is all going to be someone else's problem. Oh yeah, totally. I mean, you're you're completely implied in every single you know frame of the movie if you if you wrote it and you directed it and you're in it, and uh, and you're showing it in Dublin. Uh, so uh, everything about today is uh, very important to me. So that was a real conscious decision to go. I'm bringing this film to to Dublin uh, to show it to the Irish people there and there? Well, it's just, I think it was, uh, it's part of our UK release. And uh, obviously for me, uh, bringing it to Dublin is, uh, is, is really important. Uh, you know, here we are in just off Merrion Square where Oscar Wilde uh, spent a lot of his childhood. So it's, uh, it's very big for me. Why do you love Oscar Wilde so much? Um, well, for various different reasons, I suppose. Uh, firstly, you know, I've worked in his plays a lot and uh, always had a, a great time. Secondly, and, and done movies uh, that have done well, but mostly because I have a great love of him as a character. Um, uh, I love um, what a big star he was, and I love how blind he was to what was going on, and what mess he made of everything. I find it immensely appealing, all of that, and what a price he paid for everything. And, and like the litany of mistakes and errors he made, I find uh, very touching. And, you know, I think someone like him makes you think, God, I, I could have made all these mistakes. We all could have done, actually, because... But he kind of went all the way. And, uh, and I think his exile is incredibly uh, touching and romantic. And the, it has all the kind of glamour and tragedy of, that I love about the end of the 19th century. Messiness is a good word for it, all right? Just the way he keeps repeating the same those mistakes, mistakes yeah. and he tears up the letter and throws it away and then as soon as everyone's out of the room, he's like, I'm getting that letter. I'm yeah, it it's like he can't it. stop himself. Yeah. Um, because this is your baby, or your film, when do you, or how hard did you find it to go, that's me, I finished cutting it, I finished editing it, I'm happy with it now. I don't think there's any, the, the, it never ends really because even, uh, I didn't have that opportunity actually because we spend all of our money in making the film. We had like 10 Minutes. euros for, <laughs> oh, for post-production. So I, I, I didn't really have a chance to say I'm, I'm happy with the movie. I was taken off it uh, at a certain point because we just didn't have any more money to edit. Um, having said that, uh, I think it kind of never ends because you've got, uh, then you've got the movie coming out, then you have the movie coming out everywhere else, and you have to, here in Dublin, in Ireland, and in, in the UK, we have a really great distributor. But in other countries, you have to really push them and make sure they put some muscle into it or do some... So it's an endless job getting the movie seen because what's depressing is if you do work for 10 years on a thing and it just disappears overnight, that uh, is, is quite kind of a letdown in a way. In terms of the casting for the film, uh, it's brilliant to see you reunited with Colin Firth, uh, obviously your previous wild connection with um, In Ports of Being Ernest. How does it work whenever, you've obviously known a lot of these you know, really well-established British actors for many, many years. Is it a case of like, I'm gonna phone a friend, or did you have perfect people in mind from years ago? And as you said, over the 10 years, you were like, I know exactly who I want to play. Uh, well, I knew, um, I, I, I was great friends with, yeah, everyone in the film, actually. Uh, it was the only way I managed, I had to call in every single favor I could. Uh, <laughs> the role of uh, Constance I wrote with Emily Watson in mind, and um, everyone else I kind of coerced and uh, browbeat into uh, submission at a certain point. Even, I mean, I've got incredibly overqualified people in my smaller roles too. Uh, actors like Anna Chancellor and Beatrice Dahl and Joshua Maguire, uh, let alone all the fantastic leading actors like Colin Morgan and stuff like that. Well, it's brilliant to see Colin Morgan uh, in there, a young Irish actor as well. Uh, Tom Wilkinson was my uh, favourite whenever he popped up. Uh, he is, I know there's obviously so many brilliant Oscar Wilde lines in the film. Is this one of your ones whenever uh, he says to the guy just in passing at the door, he's like, 
because he's a priest. Oh, we obviously. missed you in church. We missed you in church. We miss, he doesn't even say church. He said, we missed you on Sunday, <laughs> which I think every Irish person has had whenever you haven't gone to Mass. It's like, it's been picked up by some, we missed you on Sunday. Um, <laughs> oh, and I'm glad you got that. that yeah, was a, yeah. Because there's a bit of, I, I cut a bit out, but in fact, it's that guy who suggests that priest uh, coming to uh, to see Oscar. He was, he was his parish priest. But um, no, I think uh, Colin Morgan, since we're in, it does an amazing job too because he has a, he's one of the actors with the best ear for dialect that I've ever come across. Uh, and he just transformed himself into a completely different character. So I was very lucky with all the actors because what a director really needs is actors who are brilliant and then they, he doesn't have to do anything very much. Um, obviously, the name is taken from Oscar Wilde's uh, story and there's a lot of discussion around happiness and sorrow in the film. Um, when do you think you've been happiest, I know it's quite vague, but happiest in your life, like, time, you know, like right now in terms of, you know, I've got my film out there, or has there been a particular period where you're like, that's me? Happy. Um, I think I'm, happiness is, um, comes and goes, really, doesn't it? it? It comes and goes quite often in the day. Uh, uh, no, I feel really happy to have, have got my film together. On the same, at the same time, though, I feel quite anxious about getting everything right for this evening, making sure everyone gets here. So it's, uh, I think we live in quite anxious times. And uh, I mean, these last few months promoting the film is, uh, is quite obviously anxious making, uh, but also great. It's fantastic. If you could meet Oscar Wilde today and you could say one thing to him, what would you? What would you say to him? Or have you thought about that? I've never really thought about it because um, I would like to, what I'd really like to do is go into his tomb and have a look at his body rather than, uh, I'm, I'm, I've, I've got a very ghoulish side to me. I love, I think everyone should be uh, exhumed. Uh, everybody. Well, no, but everybody <laughs> famous. I think it's so exciting. They exhumed Byron's body uh, in 1932 and they opened the tomb uh, the coffin, and it was all completely intact because it had been preserved in uh, liquor and then just disappeared before their eyes. But that kind of thing, I, I think meeting people, I think is an overrated uh, experience. People you haven't met, but you've appreciated, you're better off not meeting them, uh, really, because uh, you've got a much more complete picture of them uh, before you meet them. Meeting them could only, might be a little bit disappointing. Well, thanks for meeting me today. It wasn't disappointing at all. So no, it, that was, wasn't, yeah. it wasn't at all disappointing. No. Cheers, Ruben. <laughs> Thank you, and congratulations Thanks again. Thank you very much indeed. I can make you happy. Yes, you can. I dare say what I have done is fatal. Be careful, Roscoe. I love him as I always did, with a sense of tragedy and ruin. There is no mystery so great as suffering. But suffering is nothing when there is love. Love is everything. I'm in mortal combat with this wallpaper, Robbie. One of us has to go.